the weeping willow tree, a beautiful tree that we all know and can recognise so well. When the rain drops onto the leaves, the drooping leaves, it looks like the tree is crying and that's how it got its name, the weeping willow. The weeping willow grows in moist soil, commonly found near the streams, rivers, ponds and wetlands. They grow to approximately 30 to 50 feet tall and are a fast growing tree and grow several feet a year. But their average lifespan is relatively short at approximately 30 years. Willow trees have narrow leaves while their cousins, the poplar, have rounded leaves. There are approximately 400 distinct species of willow trees worldwide, approximately 75 species in North America. Willow trees are flower producers called angiosperms. These are what we know as the catkins that grow on the trees and hang down. The Wind in the Willows, that beautiful title from Kenneth Graham's book that was published in 1908 such a wonderful book that we love from our childhood but it was going to have a different title that wasn't as nice as that. So what did Kenneth Graham want to call the book? The Wind in the Willows was going to be called The Mole and the Water Rat. Doesn't work does it? Luckily enough Kenneth's publisher said that's not a good title. The Wind in the Willows is such a much better title. The beautiful sound of the leaves rustling through the trees in the wind. It immediately ignites your imagination, the wonderful magical trees blowing in the wind. The sound of the river bank where you played as a child you were there for a big adventure and maybe you would see Ratty. I like most of my friends among the animals more than I like most of my friends among mankind. Sometimes he turned away from the path to lie down on the empty stretches of the grass and he liked to imagine that nature had absorbed him bodily, his sense of himself willingly surrendered. Messing About on the River. The first edition published in 1908 features Pan on the cover. The weeping willow tree is associated with the underworld and when Orpheus went to retrieve his love, he took a bundle of willow to protect him in the underworld. Apollo gifted Orpheus his first lyre. Orpheus was the Greek god of music and poetry. He could charm the trees and animals to dance to his music. On his journey to the underworld to search for his lost love, Eurydice, he was able to charm Hades, lord of the underworld, by playing his enchanting music on his lyre. Hades said yes, he could leave with his love, under one condition. You must never look back when you leave. Unfortunately, this was not to happen because Orpheus turned round. Just a glimpse. Too late. She was taken away from him and never to be seen by him again. There is a compound in willow trees called salicin. It is the forerunner to aspirin that we know today a natural painkiller that has been used for centuries. Deers will rub their antlers against the bark of a willow and this will help the itching in their antlers. Willow trees offer an abundant shelter for wildlife. They have ample nectar and pollen so the bees, butterflies and moths love the weeping willow tree. The tree is great for nesting birds because it provides wonderful shelter. How many of us still touch wood for good luck? Well that goes back to Celtic times and they would knock on the willow trees for good luck. 
Willow's trees first introduced here about 1700. Alexander Pope is reputed to have planted a weeping willow in his riverside garden of his villa on the bank of the River Thames. In 1740, the landscaper designer Charles Bridgman planted 800 saplings at Lodge Park, Gloucestershire. In Native American culture, they would tie willow branches to their boats to keep their boats safe from the bad weather. And they would also have branches in their homes. And this was for the great spirit. They also used the willow tree because of its flexibility for their tools. And lots of healing potions were made from the willow, even tea. The willow tree originated from China. And in ancient China, people believed that the willow branches could ward off evil spirits. This was also prevalent in countless cultures across the world. The Egyptian god Osiris was found in a clump of willows. The Greek goddess Diana was also discovered among the willows. The weeping willow tree is mentioned in literature several times. In Shakespeare's plays, Desdemona's Willow Song, and the Wampin Willow in Harry Potter. Hecate, the goddess of the underworld, used a wand made of willow. Helis, meaning willow, the nine muses were called the Helicon muses after Helis. The sound of the wind blowing in a willow tree's leaves was said to be the elves whispering to one another. The Roman name for Hecate is Trivia. Here we see the Helican Muses. The willow tree is mentioned several times in the Bible and one of the words represents the willow tree as graceful. The willow tree was used for the basket, the wicker basket that Moses was put in when he was hidden in the reed bed on the Nile. Napoleon and the willow tree. When banished to the island of St Helena, Napoleon would sit under his favourite tree, which was a weeping willow tree, and read his books. When he was buried by the tree, cuttings from the tree were in high demand all around the world, so much so that a guard had to be placed there. Willow trees are associated with immortality, abundance, rebirth and eternal love. And that's why all over the world you see them on gravestones. Also, on Palm Sunday, the churches used to be filled with bows of willow. Beavers eat a lot of willow and the salicylic acid becomes concentrated in the glands near the base of their tails. The substance in the glands is called castorium and prized as a medicine. People hunted beavers to extinction in many places because the castorium was so sought after. Beavers also use the willow tree for their dams. The willow they fell will reroot and grow again. Lots of creatures benefit from the dams that beavers build. They are great conservationists. The weeping willow looks spectacular through all the seasons. No wonder artists love to paint this tree. Monet's famous willow. Even on this cold winter's day, that beautiful tree, the willow tree, looks fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed this episode with all the episodes we've done of all our wonderful trees. Until next time. <laughs>